All right, everybody, it's here. So what AMD hopes is their God tier CPU. This is the 9950X3D. So what AMD hopes this is going to do is take everything we know and love about the 9800X3D and turn things up to like 11. Basically what you get is 16 cores, 32 threads, higher clock speeds than the 9800X3D, a bunch of fixes in the background for dual CCD models, and also a price of $700 US. And due to the Zen 5 architecture's efficiency, along with the move towards placing the 3D vCache below the processing dies instead of above, heat buildup has been improved on all of these processors. So the 9950X3D can run at a higher TDP than its predecessors, and that leads to the same clock speeds as a not X3D model. And that's a big deal when you compare it to the previous generations. It also has the same amount of cache as the 7950X3D, so those rumors of there being v cache on both CCDs, well, they've been debunked. The hope for that was to get around some of the 7900X3Ds and 7950X3Ds scheduling issues, where gaming loads were sometimes split between CCDs. That sometimes removed the benefits of that additional cache, since anything running on the second CCD wouldn't get accelerated by it. So performance in those instances, it could basically sink into the ground, and that led to a lot of people in previous generations just saying, you know what, forget about the high-end X3D models, I'm just gonna go with like the 7800X3D, forget about anything about the window scheduler, forget about whatever AMD is doing in the background. And that is what led to a lot of people simply ignoring the 7950X3D and 7900X3D. Well, that has supposedly changed because one of the main reasons why AMD thought they didn't need the extra vCache in this generation is a fundamental refresh to the software stack. They've completely updated their driver package and 3 3D vCache performance optimizer to properly schedule tasks towards the preferred CCD while also doing better on the fly game detection. There's also a new application compatibility database for those games where thread detection doesn't fall into a typical algorithm. So far, AMD has singled out eight titles and there's more coming too. But we also have to remember that there are two things that are sort of concerning with this new X3D chip. The first of those is power consumption because on paper at least, it's a lot higher than the 9800X3D. And also, how does that additional power consumption lead to heat output? So on the power consumption side of things, under a full core workload, the 9950X3D sucks back a constant 200 watts. Now, while that might sound like a lot and it's a significant increase versus the 7950X3D and 9800X3D, it's the exact same as a 9950X, which sort of makes sense considering these two processors have identical clocks speeds. On the other hand, Intel's processors, well, even though the Ultra 9 285K did represent an improvement over the 14900K, it's still a lot more power hungry than this new AMD X3D chip. Now, before going into temperature testing, I just wanted to mention that all of our temperature testing is done with a little bit more realistic scenario. So with a Noctua D15 G2 in the standard configuration. And honestly, we needed to rerun this test a bunch of times just to make sure these numbers were right. Basically, despite chugging back the exact same amount of power as a vanilla 9950X, the X3D version actually runs a whole lot cooler. Now this could be down to sample to sample variants, but because of the huge gap here and the fact that this CPU runs a whole lot cooler than even the 9800X3D, I'm willing to bet that AMD is binning some of their best cores for these chips. The ones that run cool while delivering optimal frequencies. When looking at the gaming side of the equation, even with a CPU heavy title like Cyberpunk, the 9950X3D only needs a fraction of its overall power envelope. I mean, it's still significantly higher than the 7950X3D and especially the 9800X3D, but nowhere near 200 watts. And yet what most people care about is whether or not their CPU gets overly hot in gaming situations. And the answer to that is, no, even with the GPU blasting the D15 with tons of heat, the 9950X reached a peak of just over 70 degrees and then settled down just south of that. So with a decent air cooler, you shouldn't see this processor getting anywhere close to the point where it would start to throttle. Another thing I wanted to discuss very quickly is the so-called turbo modes that you're going to see on almost every single AM5 motherboard out there. Now, what this does is fundamentally change the way dual CCD chips behave. I've done a complete overview of turbo mode. You can find that 
right up here. And it's a very, very important factor to take into the equation with a lot of these new AM5 chips. Basically, what this BIOS option does is disables one of the CCDs, the CCD without vCache in this case, as well as turning off simultaneous multi-threading. Well, this essentially turns the 32-thread 9950X3D into an 8-core, 8-thread CPU, it also neatly sidesteps all those scheduling issues I was talking about earlier. I should also mention that all the motherboards that we've tested with this feature also tend to sort of massage memory sub timings and power delivery for a small additional performance boost. It should also be mentioned that the game mode in AMD's Ryzen Master software does basically the same thing, minus the additional tuning. Essentially, it disables the CCD that's not equipped with the extra cache and also turns off SMT, but that's it. So anyways, one of the main reasons why anybody would be considering the 9950X3D over the 9800X3D is of course, it's a massive payload of processing threads. Now, now, the first thing I wanted to do then is test this in a bunch of creator and synthetic workloads. So before we get into that, these are the system specs for all of our test setups. And I also wanted to mention that all of the systems, including the Intel ones, have been updated to their latest BIOSes and chipset drivers. We're running Windows with VBS disabled, with the exception of Space Marine 2, where we know the game's anti-cheat messes with stability when core isolation is turned off. And Cinebench pretty much hammers that point home. It just cuts down heavily multi-threaded performance by way too much. But enough about that since it's going to be a reoccurring theme in most of these tests. Because the real story here is that unlike previous X3D chips, the 9950X3D loses absolutely nothing against the regular version. As a matter of fact, there will always be a sample to sample variance and in Cinebench at least, our X3D chip is actually faster than the vanilla 9950X. On the other hand, in Cinebench at least, the 285K puts up a really, really good fight here. The same thing goes for single-threaded bench marks. Though here the turbo mode setting does improve things by a bit. Some of this could be due to the tuning being done by Asus on their motherboard, but it's most likely because our CPU ended up hitting a bit higher single core clocks when turbo mode was enabled. The rest of the all core workloads fall into that same vibe, with the 9950X3D getting pretty much identical results to the 9950X. And that's a pretty big deal since anyone spending $50 more than the non-X3D variant won't have to worry about a performance drop off in areas that are critical critical for productivity. But let's be honest, you're spending this money because you need that multi-core uplift or the 9800X3D. There is one thing I needed to mention though, and that's the Ultra 9 285K. While I know a lot of folks love to crap all over Arrow Lake processors, this thing has no problem leading the 4900K and provides a very, very solid competitor to the 9950X series, especially when you consider its price of 580 bucks, if you can actually find one that is, because Intel doesn't seem to be making a whole lot of them. There are also many creator workloads which put a ton of stress on the GPU in order to improve output numbers. And if you're using one of those, stepping up to a 32-thread processor doesn't really do much of anything. GPU compute has really taken over in many of these areas. All right, so basically in all core workloads, the X3D is essentially a 9950X clone without any cutbacks to the clock speeds. But I know why all of you are here or even considering paying the extra money for the CPU. And that is because you want additional horsepower in gaming workloads. And that's what we're gonna get into now. And again, I wanna explain these charts. We're testing at 1440p with the results on the left and 4K on the right at the highest possible settings. We're doing this to give you a representation of frame rates in a typical system, which these high-end CPUs will probably be used in. The first section will be raster and we'll cover ray tracing performance a bit later. Anyways, let's kick things off with Alan Wake 2. And historically, this has been a very strong title for Intel processors. And the 9800X3D gets some amazing averages here too. And while the 9950X3D does come up a bit short in that respect, it still beats the 9950X at both resolutions while also providing much better 1% lows. Oh, and that turbo mode, it doesn't really do anything at 1440p, but there's oddly a minor improvement at 4K. There's not much to say about Black Myth Wukong because it's completely GPU limited at both resolutions with both 1% lows and averages. So there's no difference between any of these processors. Other, of course, than some minor variances that are well within the margin of error. There is one holdout though, and that is the 285K's 1% lows were consistently the worst. Some games though, 
though, well, they just love the additional cache that AMD's X3D processors bring to the table. And we're actually seeing the 9950X3D's higher clock speeds allow it to post slightly better numbers than the 9800X3D at both resolutions, while also being in a whole other dimension when compared to the 9950X. Something else I should mention is that AMD seems to have finally figured out proper scheduling for their dual CCD X3D models, since both the 9950X3D and the 7950X3D get just as good, if not better performance than their single CCD variants. You can really see that here in CS2 with the 1% lows at 1440p, with both of these CPUs being absolutely dominant versus everything else. I mean, the 9800X3D does match the more expensive CPU's averages, but there's still a good advantage in 1% lows, especially with turbo mode enabled. But it's still great to see how far AMD has come with fixing all of the scheduling issues that they once had. In Cyberpunk, we're seeing what amounts to a GPU bottleneck in a lot of cases, especially at 4K. Though the 1% lows, they tell a whole different story, with all the X3D chips getting pretty incredible overall performance at 1440p. And again, turbo mode really doesn't seem to make all that much of a difference, mostly due to there being a GPU bottleneck. Even in Doom, we're seeing turbo mode with a minor advantage over the out-of-box 9950X3D. But clearly, regardless of the setting, this processor does have the capability to beat the 9800X3D, particularly when it comes to better 1% lows. I also have to give another shout out to Intel here, since the 285K is very competitive at 1440p, though it loses some steam again at 4K. And speaking of the 285K, well, it tended to crash all the time in Space Marine 2. We initially thought this was a conflict between us running with VBS turned off and the game's anti-cheat software, but turning core isolation back on, it didn't fix the problem. Anyways, about the 9950X3D, this is the first title that points towards there being some minor work that still needs to be done with scheduling. While it gets amazing results versus the regular 9950X, it needs turbo mode to convincingly match or beat the 9800X3D at both resolutions. Hogwarts Legacy, well, that pretty much shows the exact same thing, though this time we had crashes to desktop with the 14900K. But I want to be clear about this. Some of these issues can clearly be traced back to the Nvidia drivers and aren't Intel's or the game's fault whatsoever. Anyways, this is another game where the dual CCD X3D models still obviously need some scheduling optimizations. So while the 9950X3D's averages look good, its 1% lows are barely any better than a 9950X. It takes turbo mode with its disabling of SMT and a CCD to completely fix that. Horizon Forbidden West is another game that highlights the benefits of running in either turbo or game mode to get those peak 1% lows. But overall, the 9950X3D is still showing a clear advantage over its non-X3D version, while essentially tying the 9800X3D at both resolutions. Call of Duty Black Ops simply highlights what will happen in a lot of situations for people playing at higher resolutions and detail settings. Even with an RTX 5090, we're still largely GPU bound, so there's no difference between any of the processors here. And you might have thought that Rainbow Six would smash right into that GPU limitation too, but it doesn't, because look at those 1% lows for the dual CCD X3D models. This proves two things. First of all, the 9950X3D's clock speed advantage, or the 9800X3D, can be pretty helpful in some situations, and it also points towards AMD making huge steps towards evolving their scheduler optimizations. And like I said before, there are just some games that love AMD's massive cache footprints, especially when they're paired up with the Zen 5 architecture, regardless of the resolution being used. And while the 9950X3 doesn't really offer anything over the 9800X3, I honestly don't see any point in even considering the standard 9950X at this point. For only $50 more, you can get the same 2D performance and infinitely better gaming frame rates. It's just a win-win situation here. And yes, that situation carries into Starfield 2, though once again, those pesky 1% lows end up being a bit of a challenge when compared to the 9800X3D. But on the positive side, the 9950X3D does seem to be the fastest gaming CPU on the planet right now. It just has some very minor limitations due to its dual CCD nature that stop it from being a slam dunk against its less expensive X3D alternative. And you might remember Warhammer 3 Total War as being one of the games that AMD's instituted new application specific profiles for. And because of that, performance really pops off here. I mean, the frame rates are simply spectacular for the dual CCD X3D models, with the 9950X3D just demolishing the 9800X3D and even the 7950X3D matching it. Honestly, I just hope AMD keeps on rolling out these optimizations for titles that might not properly support dual 
CCD X3D models because the results here are just spectacular. Heading into ray tracing, and you might think this would cause every single CPU to become GPU bound, but in some cases, it actually doesn't. Alan Wake is one of those with the 9800X3D leading everything else at both resolutions and the 9950X3D leading the non-X3D variant. Meanwhile, the Intel CPUs put down some pretty good numbers here too. Meanwhile, Avatar is GPU limited on both sides, though there are some falloffs in the 1% lows for the 7950X3D and Ultra 9 285K at 1440p. Otherwise though, we're looking at a wall of identical results. Now this is something I wasn't expecting. While running in a purely raster environment showed very little to no difference between these processors at 1440p and 4K, turning on RT actually hits pretty hard. Now the 9000X3D chips are clearly the superior choice. Though, once again, the 1% lows are better on the 9800X3D or with turbo enabled on the 9950X3D. Other games like Cyberpunk are largely GPU limited, but here there's a very narrow win for the 285K or the stock 9950X3D at 1440p. I mean, we're talking about three frames per second overall, so we're literally splitting hairs here, but I do have to give Intel some credit for addressing some of Arrow Lake's performance deficiencies. We're also seeing some variants in those 1% lows in Doom at both resolutions this time. This game seems to really like the 9950X3D's high frequencies and 3D V cache, since at 1440p again, those numbers are able to stay about 10% ahead of the 9800X3D and stock 9950X. And I wanted to pause here for a second on Spider-Man Remastered, since there's an odd situation going on here. Regardless of the resolution, frame rate stayed pretty much the same, and in some cases 1% lows actually improved at 4K. So obviously there's some weird stuff going on behind the scenes that's limiting performance at 1440p. I mean, beat the game engine or a GPU bottleneck, but whatever it is, both the 9000X3D processors and 285K all get the best results here. And overall, that leads to a situation in ray trace scenarios where the most recent 9000X3D models all get the best results, with the 9950X3D narrowly edging out the Ryzen 7 model at 1440p, though it becomes a wash at 4K. The Intel Ultra 9 285K isn't that far behind either, with some surprisingly strong results. And yet ray tracing does tend to highlight one main fact. Even with the fastest gaming GPU on the planet, RT is largely GPU limited, with some minor variances from one processor to the next. Moving on to raster, and there's a lot more to talk about here since the 9950X3D shows some clear benefits over the regular 9950X. Especially, yes, I'll say this again, in the 1% lows at both resolutions. Part of that is likely due to AMD doing a ton of work behind the scenes to improve their task scheduling. It's not foolproof yet, but you can clearly see the difference here. I mean, just look at how the 7950X3D now stacks up against the 7800X3D at 1440p. Performance uplifts versus the 9800X3D, well, that's a little bit more hit and miss. It needs turbo mode enabled to really distinguish itself. But when the dust settled, the 9950X3D did squeeze out a very narrow win. I also wanted to address the Intel side of the coin, but to do that in a fair way, we need to eliminate Space Marine 2 and Hogwarts from the calculation, since each had issues running those games. And on a more level footing, it's still impossible to recommend the 285K at its current price, especially when you take the overall platform cost into consideration. Its average are okay, I guess, but its frame rate consistency is miles behind current generation Ryzen CPUs. So I guess that's it. And if you take one thing away from this video, it's that it, it's sort of mission accomplished for AMD here because they have created what I would call sort of like the everything CPU. We now have a processor that has 3D V cache and an extremely high core count and thread count for that matter, without any of the sacrifices normally associated with combining those two things. Like there were those sacrifices on the 7950X3D. The real beauty is that it offers so much flexibility, power or for creator workloads and the adaptability to simply turn off a CCD or enable turbo mode for potentially higher frame rates in the games that you play. Even with the 7950X3D also getting those same uplifts through AMD scheduling updates, the 9950X3D still represents a huge step forward when compared to the previous generation. So I guess with all of this taken into account, there is one sort of word of caution that I have to have with anybody considering this processor. Look, unless you absolutely positively need all of those 32 threads for whatever workloads that you're, you're using right now, the 9800X3D is a far better choice, a better bang for your buck for any purely gaming system. On the other hand, there's definitely a place for the 9950X3D. Anyways, I'm Mike with Harrow Canucks. I hope that you enjoyed this pretty extensive video and I'm gonna see you in the next one.
Have a great day, guys.